Oh, it's showtime. Can we get that second Drivers' Championship? Let's find out as we go to five red lights to the Brazilian Grand Prix. The final race in 2026 is upon us. Lights out and away we go. And it's the two nearest championship protagonists now side by side. It's Felipe Drogovic has spun it. No, 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 no. The red flag's out. Oh, no. How's that happened, though? Lawson? Well, he was in P4. How's he end up in P1? He's miles ahead. And we now go for that pass, that final nail in the coffin for us to get the championship on the outside. Verstappen defends the inside line. We're on the curb. Verstappen gets back into second place. But we have another bite at the cherry because we get on the power early. We use the battery up the hill to the inside. We ease the car through and we're up into second place. Lawson, he's led the way ever since that red flag restart and all the pressure has been on us to deliver, to overtake all those cars, to get the position we need minimum to win this championship. And we've done just that. We can breathe a sigh of relief. Lawson will win the race, but we will win this second Drivers' World Championship. The dust has well and truly settled from an epic 2026 season. And now we're here. Welcome back to F1 23, my team career mode. This is season number five. Of course, throughout the entirety of last season, I was naming it the 2026 mod career because we spent a lot of time and effort building up to that season with Project 26, the new engine regulations, building our own engine. But now we're returning to the more kind of normal and uniform uh, name, if you will, for this season, which is season five of our F1 23, my team career mode, having won both championships last time out with AAR Lamborghini. And we continue to be AAR Lamborghini into the next season. We won five races last season, doubling our race win tally. It was a very successful season, the most successful season we've had on the game so far. And we secured that second driver's championship. But just like the sport in real life, the beauty is at the end of the year, everything gets reset to zero and you go again. You have to dig deep, find that motivation, and be able to find that drive that you had so much at the end of last season to kick off strong into a new season. And things are changing again in the regulations. It's not such a major one like the engine regulation change, but we have a chassis regulation reset. And we did a lot of work at the end of last season to adapt most of the parts. We have three still to adapt, and we have a small amount of R&D points to try and finish off that adaption so I go and tactically pick the ones I want I thought I'd go for the ultimate upgrade at the end there on the brakes and then one of the uh, I think it's a, a minor upgrade so we've left the major upgrade to repurchase next season that will cost full price right now it's half the price to adapt them so that's why I chose the ultimate upgrade thought you know kind of get your best bang for your buck basically at adapting that one rather than the major upgrade and although this team is staying in partnership with Lamborghini we we are not going to be staying in partnership with our current teammate, Pierre Gasly, whose contract is up. And of course, we got very fed up of Pierre Gasly towards the end of last season. Multiple times where he cost us points, cost the team points, crashing with us, tripping over each other. It's time to have this divorce and we're going for a new teammate. We've got quite a bit of budget to spend on signing a new teammate, but I want to go for one of the younger talents. I want to try and nurture them even more and grow them into a great Formula 1 driver. There's a few different picks. Felipe Drogovic surprisingly has grown to 85 overall even though he hasn't been in the series for too long. I think two seasons officially and he was with Haas kind of towards the back last season but he's still grown to be the same rating as Liam Lawson the man who was our main rival in the championship last season. So that's pretty crazy but Teo Porcher he's one rating higher and a little bit cheaper than Liam Lawson and I don't reckon McLaren are going to be giving up Liam Lawson very easily. So I think Teo Porcher is a better choice potentially. Felipe Drogovic, 
as much as I like him, and he, he's a really good pick, he's even cheaper than poor chair. We've been there. We've done that. We've done the whole storyline with Dragovic before on a previous F1 game. We have never had Teo poor chair as a teammate. And judging by the comments that you guys have left in the past, in the last few episodes of last season, you guys really thought that he deserved to be our teammate for this season. And if we look at real life, he's not going to be on the F1 grid having won the F2 championship. He deserves to have an F1 seat. So let's make that possible here in the game. I know he was already with Audi, the Audi Works team. Very exciting project. But imagine what he could do in our car. He's got more pace on his base stat than Gasly has. So even though we're swapping a Frenchman for another Frenchman, Theo Porcher, he's got the potential, scarily, to be even quicker and better than Pierre Gasly. And for a lot of our partnership with Gasly, he was beating us. You know, in season three, he was the team leader, really, you know, taking most of the points on his shoulders. Last season, it ended a bit sour, but he was still very quick at certain points of the season to be a bother to us and be a challenger in the championship. So, Teo Porcher, I think we can grow him into an absolute monster. And who knows if we're going to be able to tame that creation or not. I guess that's going to be the fresh challenge for us with this driver. And so, with that business of our teammate done, we now transition from season four, 2026 in game, to 2026. 27 season 5 and this is what the brand new calendar is looking like. We start off at the fan favourite down under in Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. We go to a very exciting Las Vegas GP in game for the second round only and then last season it ended up being a banger having Abu Dhabi so early in the season for round number 3. Round 4 is for the first time the Chinese Grand Prix comes to this series for round 4 then we go to Bahrain and then then enter the European portion of the season where Imola returns on the calendar after a couple of seasons out in my rotation with Spain and Great Britain finishing up the first half. Then we go to Austria, Portugal, Monza to Belgium, and then the last flyaways, Canada, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, and finishing at what I'm sure you'll agree was an amazing place to have the finale back at Sao Paulo for the Brazilian Grand Prix. You'll notice we have dropped Monaco off the calendar. Just like in real life, there's debates about whether Monaco works anymore with the bigger modern cars. Well, certainly for me in the game, Monaco with the AI now getting actually so clever that they're no longer, you know, crashing or, you know, they, there's not as much overtaking really because they're so good at defending each other. Monaco's really become a bit lackluster for me in the last few seasons on this game at least. So we've dropped off Monaco and we've dropped Qatar as I felt that I was getting a bit too samey-samey every season with the strategies. And instead, the fresh life of China, Imola. We haven't done Imola with these kind of nearly maxed out cars. So that'll be quite exciting as well. And then having Mexico back on the calendar, which was a difficult circuit for us the last time we came to it. But with the main straight being so long, like Las Vegas, it should produce a banger. So that is the calendar for next season. We've sorted our teammate already. We're staying in partnership with Lamborghini for a second season. But the regulations have changed. There's a chassis regulation change. And so that means it's time to show you our brand new looking car for season five. And its livery has taken great inspiration from Lamborghini's real-life hypercar in the World Endurance class. our new AAR Lamborghini car for season five. Like I said, taking heavy inspiration from the real life Lamborghini WEC livery. The black down the middle emphasizing the Italian stripe along the car. You've got hits of red in there and you'll also notice some crossover from last season's livery into this one. So it's like a nice blend of the livery we had last season and the livery that Lamborghini actually run in WEC. We've got a nice addition of a third star on the car to note our third Constructors Championship and eagle eye viewers may also notice the specific sponsor on 
on the barge board area for Teo Porcher, one of his personal sponsors in real life, coming to the team as well as we sign him as a teammate. But uh, we're now in Season 5, and there is confirmation we have lost some upgrades. Only one, though. Only one. We've done very, very well to adapt the car for the regulation change into this next season. We've got one upgrade to purchase. We've got a long way to go from 77 points to the over 1,000 that we need to, uh, to purchase that upgrade, but that will come soon enough, and then we'll be back to a maxed out car, basically. And that's going to be the case for a lot of teams, really. So it's going to be a very, very close competition this season because right from the get-go, most teams will be maxed out and it will be all about the driver and track-to-track -track dependency. And of course, for our team specifically, we'll be hitting the ground running way more than we did last season as there won't be any engine gremlins. We've now completely solidified the engine. There is one last development hurdle that we can add with extra MGUK power. So that is still a thing that's crossed over from last season into this one. And we might need it versus some fierce competitors as Audi really look to level up this season. They had a fantastic debut in Formula One last season. Obviously, it was a breakout season for Theo Porcher, who really led the team over the more senior man, Carlos Sainz. Well, Pierre Gasly has gone the complete opposite direction after we signed Theo Porcher. We have swapped the Frenchman's round, essentially, with Audi, and Gasly will drive for them alongside Carlos Sainz. That is actually a really strong pairing when you look at their ratings, their focus as well, and of course, Gasly may still be a problem for us, and more a problem, because he's now on a rival team, so no more of those kind of teammate politics, he's just racing for himself and his own team now. This team had a really good development path last season, they became podium contenders at the end of season four, so if things have gone well for them in the winter break, Audi could be ruffling the feathers of the biggest name in this sport and there's no bigger than Scuderia Ferrari and things didn't exactly go the way they wanted it wasn't a fairy tale first season for Verstappen and Ferrari but in his second season driving for the Scuderia he's hoping that he can solidify himself he was getting comfier and comfier with the car and there were flashes of speed but it was Mick Schumacher that really took all the plaudits last season for the red outfit trying to do good by his surname and his father in Ferrari Ferrari, he'd be looking for another strong second season. But with a chassis regulation change, well, Ferrari sometimes haven't been the best at adapting the chassis and bodywork, so we'll see how it goes. But Ferrari opting for stability then by sticking with their driver lineup from last season. And to be honest, with the way their seasons have been going on this game in the series so far, I think stability is what they need to help them focus on the car performance. And stability is the name of the game for several teams this season. Alpine retained their lineup of Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon. I really thought this team was going to be a dark horse last season. They started off so well and then they just couldn't keep up development, just like in real life with the rivals around them. So they'll be hoping for a much more consistent level of performance over the season, but with now the cars getting towards maxed out, perhaps Alpine will just be stuck and relegated to forever being a midfield team. Along with Audi, one of the other new teams in Formula 1 last season was Andretti Cadillac. Now, they've retained their lineup of Logan Sargent, the American, no shock there, and Sergio Perez for stability in that department, but their car has an all-new look. Gone is the bright yellow and red, and in is baby blue and dark navy for their second season in Formula 1. Still using a bought Honda engine in the back of their car, as they still work to build their own engine with Cadillac, of course, but, uh, you know, this team did see some upgrades at the end of last season and uh, they actually started to knock on the door for some higher positions than backmarker so at that kind of rate you know first season into Formula 1 they obviously started at a much lower R&D level than when Audi took over Sauber so that difference in performance of these two new teams is there for it for a reason and so they, they've actually got the same sort of improvement though just different starting points so Andretti still kicking in their second season and hoping maybe to score some good points this season another 
team that they were rivaling a lot of last season is Golf Williams. They retain their driver lineups of Kevin Magnussen and Joe Guan Yu. Joe Guan Yu growing to the same rating now as Kevin Magnussen. He's got actually a 98 focus. So Joe Guan Yu maybe becoming the new de facto team leader in the Williams team, looking to charge forward. And I'm sure he'll be really looking forward to going back home to his home Grand Prix for the first time in a while at the Chinese Grand Prix. Now, the last four teams we've just gone through have opted to keep their driver lineups for stability in this new era of Formula One. But one team that has made a massive change, kind of out of their hands, is Red Bull Ford. As Fernando Alonso has finally retired for good from Formula One. Obviously, he retired once in this very series and then came back with Aston Martin, but he is retired from Formula One for good. And in comes Liam Lawson. Yep, Red Bull have brought back Liam into the Red Bull family. He was our rival in the championship last season. So this is a big deal. This is a championship contending driver now partnering back in his old family. He's gone away from McLaren. So that leaves McLaren with a bit of a hole to fill. But it's a very strong lineup of Norris and Lawson. But for Red Bull's sake, let's hope that this season, maybe they can stop their two drivers fighting fighting each other way too hard. But Red Bull, Ford going strong for a second season. They've opted for a more... Or They've opted for, for a more familiar look with the livery this season, going back to the red and yellow on the ball around the car. And sticking with the theme of a rather large driver transfer, Aston Martin have been busy over the winter break because they have managed to persuade Charles Leclerc to sign for them. They've stolen him away from Mercedes only after one season. Leclerc left Ferrari only one season ago for the Silver Alley. Arrows and Aston Martin, I don't know what they've done to, to persuade him. Clearly, they must know something that we don't. And Leclerc must know something that we don't. Because he's opted to go with Aston Martin and ditch Mercedes after a year to partner Yuki Tsunoda, who remains at Aston Martin. Of course, Aston Martin, the main team for Honda engines in Formula 1 now. So it makes sense why they've stuck with Tsunoda. Aston, for the first time since Season 2, have now changed their livery, of course, from Season 2 to Season 4. Four, they had that striking white livery, but they've returned to their more formal green colours and have also got a brand new big sponsor in the form of Repsol. So a very big change for Aston Martin this season in terms of looks and driver calibre. It could be a big one. Another team that I'll be hoping it'll be another big one for them as they've been challenging for the title consistently the last three seasons are McLaren. Obviously Oscar Piastri stays put. He won a world championship with McLaren in season three and it's Alexander Albon that takes that vacated seat from Liam Lawson. So a bit of musical chairs between Red Bull, Aston and McLaren all started with Fernando Alonso retiring from Formula 1. So it's now Albon and Piastri alongside each other, both highly focused. Obviously Piastri won a championship with his team so he knows what it takes but McLaren just haven't got it over the line in terms of constructors championship quite yet and they're now known as Chrome McLaren F1 as you can clearly see they've got the Chrome McLaren livery plenty of silver back on the car Piastri and Albon hoping that this team will be once again as consistent as they have been in the last three seasons this brings us on to Mercedes who have been consistently very poor in this series so far and they have a driver lineup of George Russell and Valtteri Bottas as they throw it back again with Bottas back at Mercedes. Um, really, they've just been left high and dry by Leclerc leaving them because otherwise Leclerc and Russell is probably one of the strongest partnerships on paper, but Leclerc's jumped ship for whatever reason and, uh, well, Mercedes had no other option but to sign a more reliable and familiar face of Valtteri Bottas rather than take a risk this season, but they have been serial underperformers in this series so far, ever since Lewis Hamilton won that at eighth world championship. The Silver Arrows still retain some silver this season compared to last with their livery and car, but a large amount of carbon fiber as they return to the full Cypod Solution chassis for this season compared to last. And that brings us on to our final team. Last but not least, it's Alfa Romeo Haas. Felipe Drogovic stays at this team and he's partnered alongside his fellow compatriot,
it, Enzo Fittipaldi. So Haas, obviously, they also were left a bit high and dry as they had Bottas driving for them. Very, very solid. But Mercedes needed someone to fill Leclerc's spot. So again, a bit of a domino effect with this one as they retain Drogovic, who is 85 rated. And uh, like I said, would have actually still been a very solid pick as a teammate. So I think he can actually do very well as a team leader as now he's got Enzo Fittipaldi coming up from a free agent into Formula 1 for the first time. So quite a few teams opting for stability and quite a few other teams opting for some radical changes in their driver lineups and that has affected the remaining teams in terms of a domino effect and really has been a wacky driver market over the winter break and it has certainly been a wacky time in Formula 1 for development because look at this R&D chart. This is crazy. Aston Martin Honda are currently top of the R&D chart before the season begins. So this is why Leclerc jumped ship for Mercedes. Mercedes are the third worst team on the grid. They have been severely hurt by the chassis regulation changes as well as Ferrari, Red Bull, Alpine, McLaren. All these teams have suffered so much in comparison to Audi, Alfa Romeo Haas, ourselves and Aston Martin. That is why Leclerc jumped ship. He knew something. Aston probably showed him development and said look mate come to our team and you could fight for a championship with us and he just might do that now alongside Sonoda. Alfa Romeo Haas, Drogovic and Fittipaldi are going to have a car that's the third best on the grid. Audi are going to seriously be competitive with Sainz and Gasly with the fourth best team. We are going to be right up there in second place in the R&D chart and all the usual suspects, Chrome McLaren, Red Bull Ford, they're no longer on the top. We've had so much of McLaren and Red Bull, McLaren and Red Bull in this series so far. This season might be the first time we don't see either of those teams featuring or maybe at least not initially at the start of the season. Bonkers, absolutely bonkers looking at that R&D chart over the winter. And if that R&D chart alone doesn't get you excited for this season, I don't know what will, but hopefully you are, along with the driver transfers, our brand new chassis and car for this second season with Lamborghini. Everything gets reset to zero and we go again. Guys, that has been the pre-season video for season five. And we'll get going with round number one of this season in the new year. But until then, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below of this upcoming season. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for that in the new year. Until then, guys, hope you guys have a great new year. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.